Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's show. I have a wonderful woman on with me today by the name of Ellen Amelia, who Hi. not only is um, a client of Gamut Management, but has an incredible story to share that I'm, I'm just thrilled to have her on the show today. So hi, Ellen. Thank you for joining us. For having me. So Ellen, can you tell our audience um, about your story, your journey, and what brought you here today? Well, my story so far, as it continues, so far I was about 10 years ago in 2009, I was in a car accident leaving me with paralysis from the chest down. Um, I don't, I also don't have hand function as well. I have a spinal cord injury. Um, it was me and a few friends, and this is something that's really important for me to share. The driver was huffing. I don't know if you know what that is. I don't, maybe you could share with us what that means. Huffing is, I don't know if people have ever seen the spray paint cans or cans that you use to clean off keyboards with for your mm -hmm. computer. Yes. But what people do is that they inhale it and they get a high off of it. And the girl that was driving ended up doing that while we were driving and she actually, the police report said that she had went off the road and hit a tree before the accident, but we had went off the road and hit a tree. And the driver had passed away before the accident. The passenger that was in the car she has severe trauma. I can't even imagine what, you know, she kind of had to deal with and face. And I was in the back seat and I was in a coma for about three weeks after the accident. And the doctors told my family, if I woke up from my coma, I would probably be blind and have the cognition of a third grader for the rest of my life. And I would not be able to walk and I'd be paralyzed. Oh my God. Yeah, wow. So, so how old were you then and how old are you now? I was 18 when it happened and I'm 28 now. Okay, so 10 years ago, as you said. Okay, I just wanted to get get a bearing of the, the timing here of age-wise. So 18, you have so much exciting things happening at 18 years old. Were you yep. about to embark upon college or something else during that I, I had just graduated high school and I was getting ready to go to college in about two weeks. Oh. I was going to go to college to play softball. And actually, right before my accident, my grandma had passed away and her funeral was about three or four days before my accident. Oh my so, God. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of things happening at once. So you're 18. In a blink of a moment, your whole world changes. Not a, and not only for you physically, but I would imagine emotionally, right? Mentally, that had to have been. I mean, overwhelming that y you had changed, and you lost a friend and two friends, really, because the other one is at, at the, her life changed as well. Yes. Well, her life, her, the one of the driver had passed away and the passenger, she just had, I can't even imagine the trauma that she had to face because she walked out, I think, with a broken wrist and maybe a broken rib. So she kind of had to like witness everything. And I know she doesn't, we don't live close to each other right now and we don't talk a lot, but I do know that she is, I, well, I hope that she's doing really well. Um, I just can't even imagine that the trauma that somebody would have to go through with that. And as far as me, I had a traumatic brain injury when I woke up from my accident. So for about the first six months to a year almost, I have almost no recollection of it at all. Mm. Wow. So the first six months to a year after the accident is dark. Yes, definitely. The first three months, I think that the only memory I have from the first three months is I don't, I don't have any like vision of anything. I just kind of see like darkness. And I remember thinking like, when am I going to wake up from this dream? Like what's going on? But I don't remember anything. Like I don't remember being able to move or having function or anything like that. I just keep 
having like this image in my head thinking like, when am I going to wake up from this dream? Oh my goodness. So now take us from, you know, the, you, the doctor shared with your parents that cognitively you'll probably be at the level of a third grader, most likely blind, I'm sure paralyzed. They probably knew that fairly quickly. What transpired from there? Because obviously you are incredibly strong. You're incredibly positive and, and had a will to get yourself to where you are today. So kind of guide us through that, that time of your life, because there's definitely people out there that are listening and watching and maybe are 10 years ago to where you were and they need to look at you and say, I can do that too. I, I can be at that place that she is and I'm, and I'm listening to. Yes. Well, it's definitely the, I want to say like the first probably six months when I was out of the hospital, I was in rehab, but it was inpatient rehab. And then after that rehab, I went home for a month and then I went to another rehab and had found a recovery center in Florida. At the time, it was called Project Walk Orlando. Um, they've changed the name to Next Step Orlando. And I had decided to go down there and maybe try it out for a month or two. And what it is, is a neurological based recovery center, but it's based on exercise science. Mm. But they will have a trainer, you know, just enough, like a regular trainer that would work at a gym, but they're special, specialized in neurological recovery. So they know more tactics or more things to do to help with the nervous system and how to help gain function back. And that was something I was really focused on and into. And probably for the last seven or eight years, I was going very frequently to the gym to focus on that recovery. And now at this point, it's something I'm focused on, but I also am seeing more things to life besides recovery. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of like adding into the mix of stuff. And that's, that's where I'm at right now. But like getting to the point that I'm at, I definitely want to say just, I guess being able to keep your determination and staying focused and meeting people. Like I've met a lot of people in my position that are in wheelchairs that were what inspired me or what kept me going as well as the community and the people that I know. So the connection um, that we're also hearing from other guests is so critically important to feeling that you can do this and, and that there are others out there like you in your situation. But I would imagine there was still a lot of um, internal work that you had to do on yourself for your own you know, mental health and wellness. Um, is that accurate to say? Did you have to really dig deep? I mean, it's one thing that I always like to bring up that our my situation with my son, who was born with muscular dystrophy, he doesn't know any other life. You knew a whole life for 18 years before this happened. So not that one is easier than the other or, or you know, easier to manage, but I, I would say there's a, there's a definite um, path and journey that you have to go on to get yes. to where you are today. I think that it, it's still a continuous thing for me. I think for, I mean, for me, I'm very hopeful and optimistic in myself. And I know that the doctors tell you all the time, like you're paralyzed, you're, they told, I mean, when I left the hospital, that was the first thing the doctor told me when I was leaving. I said bye to him and I said, you know, I'm excited one day I'm gonna come walk in here and shake your hand. And he said, I don't know if you'll be walking in here, but it'll be nice if your hands work again. Like that would be great. So hearing that is kind of like a, a blow to anybody. Like yeah. you're never gonna walk again, you're paralyzed. And even continuously now, I believe that recovery is possible, maybe not to the point of walking or gaining full function back, but gaining as much as much as you can to become as independent as you can. And I think that's something that 
is an ever-changing and still a continuous process. So it's kind of like not something like there's one thing that helps that helps with that, if that makes sense. Absolutely, it does. And one thing that I want to just pivot to is to make sure that we have time to talk about, because I think it's really important in your journey, is that you have now an affinity that you would like to be a model because it's important to you to be able to show the world that people come in all different shapes and sizes. Can you tell me a little bit about how that came to be? That actually came to be very, I want to say kind of random. Um, I had gained a lot of weight after my accident. I lost maybe 60, 68 pounds around since my accident. And um, I had you know, just gotten compliments. You're really pretty. You should consider being a model, things like that. But it's something that I've heard before. It's not something that I've ever really thought like, oh yeah, I really want to be a model. It's never been something that was an interest to me of, oh, I know I'm so beautiful. I'm going to be a model. Like, I don't think that way or really, that's not how I am. So I was just like, thank you. I appreciate the compliments. I'll, you know, kind of take that. But I was focusing on other things with my life and like, even afterwards, I'm, I was still kind of focusing on other things. And, you know, one day I just kind of thought, like, I, I realize my worth as a person. And I do think that there is, I am a beautiful person, but I don't you think are. that beauty, beauty is just a physical thing. Mm -hmm. I think that beauty is so much more than that. And it's inside of you. It's your characteristics, your personality, like who you are as a person. And I think... I realized like, you know, people always tell me you should be a model. And I think that I, I can be a model as in reflecting myself of who I am on the inside and not who I am on the outside. Absolutely. And, and it, we can feel it. We can feel your, your beauty inside and outside. And I think that is really one of the reasons why I, I wanted to start cabinet management and why it, it even evolved with Runway of Dreams is because the world needs to see that right. people come in all different shapes and sizes and beauty is is internal and external and you embody all of that so why can't yeah. you be in a commercial or on a billboard or all the things that pop culture dictates what beauty is and we are going to rebrand what that means and I, to I totally and really agree with that. Like, I, I can feel that so much because I feel like you just said, why does one person need to be, like, specified or looked at as the model or, like, the perfect type of person when everybody has a beauty to them, whether they're missing an arm or they're paralyzed or, you know, any, you know, their culture, their ethical, you know, who they are as a person like that. But I think that you know, who you are as a person, your beauty inside of you is, is really what the model is. I, I couldn't agree more. And even rebranding what the word model means. I mean, if we're getting that granule, what, what is a, a model? It's a model is a person that is relatable, that you could look at a magazine or have a, a young woman sitting and looking at a billboard and say, oh my God, she looks like me. She's in a wheelchair. She's paralyzed. That can change people's lives. And that's what we're, we're really here to do. And I'm so grateful to have you on the show to, to speak about that because it's, it's a change that needs to happen. And I think just like you just said about that, you know, seeing somebody in my position you know me or any any other person in a wheelchair and just seeing them and saying like you know i that i see that person like look what they're doing i can i can do that too or i can if she can do that i can do that i can make that happen and kind of just offering that inspiration and that hope to other people i absolutely agree now if we have any um buddy that's watching the show and would like to connect with you maybe has some questions What's the best way that they can reach you? Is it Instagram? Yes, I have an Instagram. And what it is that? Is Ellen Emilia, and Emilia is spelled with an E, and then E-E, 
So it's Ellen period, Amelia period, E E. Perfect. Because I'm sure that you're going to have some fans after, after this episode airs. But before we go, um, I'd like to ask my guests one final question. Um, and it relates very much to something that I think is, is going to get us through this time of life where we're all experiencing something that we never have before. And that's a vision board, something that we can truly visualize that we want our life to go in or people that we want to meet or things we want to accomplish in our life. If you had a vision board and you may, but if you had to have a vision board, what or who would be on it? I think ooh, that's a good, that's like a good question about like what and who. I think who I definitely would have Maya Angelou on there because she's oh. one of my, I love her. She's like very, she's very inspiring to me. Um, as far as who, I think just, it could be people that inspire me, like even just like my grandparents or friends. It doesn't have to be like a famous person, for example, but I think, ooh, this is so hard. Like who else would I put up there? Like I know my- what? Like where do you see yourself? What would be your ideal dream of where life is gonna take you? Well, I want to like older when I'm older, because I know right now with everything going on with like life and all the things I want to kind of get into, but older, I definitely want to have like a farm or some type of land to live off the land. So like that makes me really excited thinking about that and like thinking about like, I guess being able to like grow your own crops and like either help people like have a farm to sell uh, to sell to other people in your community or just kind of like being able to help other people and also being able to like help yourself with that. Oh, like, I love that. That really excites me. I know it sounds so weird. I feel like a lot of people don't think of that stuff, but. I think it's perfect for your vision board and I think you're going to make that happen. I I'm think I would have that and I definitely, I'm trying to think like, I have a vision board right now, but it's not, it's more words because I like to write a lot. So when I get up, I'll, I have like, 10 or 12 things written on the side of my wall in my kitchen that I'll go look at and it just says like random things just to like remind me to do like pray thanking God just being excited about the day but those are like the kind of things that I do for like my vision board to help me beautiful I, I don't think you can go wrong with any of that and that's certainly what we all need today and in, in today's world so thank you so much for joining us today on the show it's it's been amazing to hear your story and i know you're going to inspire a lot of people out there so thank you so much for joining us well thank you for having me mindy and i hope that i do inspire people because that's what kind of keeps me inspired so you hopefully everybody gets really do so i can be inspired by them good thank you everybody for joining us today if you would like to be on the gamut network please email us at talent at gametmanagement.com and tell us why you'd be a great guest. Have a good weekend. Bye. Thank you.